Hey y'all, Mr. Gibson here. Welcome to the next lesson in cryptography. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the rail fence cipher and how to use it to encipher and decipher messages by hand. Rail fence ciphers are a type of transposition cipher that uses rows or rails to separate out letters into the plain text message and then regroup them to form the cipher text. In this first example, we'll use the plain text message mathematics. We start by creating this grid, two rails of 11 spaces. Then we zigzag the plain text letters starting in the top row and continuing until we run out of characters. So M would go in the top left box, and then A would go down one to the right, and then back up to the top row for T, and so on. Once we've completed the grid, we can reassemble these letters, putting the top row letters first, and then joining them with the bottom row letters. Notice that I've written the characters in the standard formatting for ciphertext, uppercase blocked into groups of five characters. If you don't have enough characters to make a full group of five, like I did, that's okay. Just write as many as you can until you run out. So we have the ciphertext message M-T-E-A-I S-A-H-M-T-C. A variation on the cipher is to use more than two rows. In this example, we'll use three, but in general, you can use as many as you'd like. The number of rows used is acting as the key for this algorithm, changing the ciphertext for the same plain text, even though the process is the same. So we'll zigzag our letters starting in the top left, And then we'll collect the letters in the top row, M, E, I, followed by letters in the middle row, A, H, M, E, C, wrapping up with the letters in the bottom row, T, A, F. You can see we, get a, we do get a different ciphertext message, even though we have the same plain text, because we altered the number of rails used in the ciphertext. Deciphering these types of messages are only a little bit trickier. I like to take the grid and then highlight which of the boxes would have had letters in them during the enciphering process. Now, starting at the beginning of the ciphertext, we can write the letters across the top row until we run out of spaces. And then continue on in our ciphertext words uh, with the bottom row. R, E, T, B. And once we filled in the grid, we can now just zigzag our way back through the message to recreate the cipher text, or sorry, the plain text. In this case, we would have Harry Potter. And here, when, once you've got plain text and you know where the spacing goes, we can write it with our conventional lowercase to reintroduce the spaces where we think they fit best. We can use this algorithm one more time on the three row rail fence. So I know we're going to have one in the following boxes. To speed things up, I'll just use a little dot to denote where the letters are going to go. In here, we would have a T, O, I in the top row, A, L, R, W, and F middle row, and then Y, S, T in the bottom row. And again, we can follow the zigzag pattern to realize that our plain text message is my favorite pop star. And that's it. You should now be able to encipher and decipher messages using the Railfin's transposition cipher. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.